Hello everyone, welcome to Tuesday, the 24th day of September 2024. Well, as we mentioned yesterday, there's not a lot going on. So in the weather business, we call this severe clear. There's just not much happening and there really won't be much happening for the days ahead, but there doesn't mean there isn't something to talk about. What we're gonna talk about has less to do with the weather, more the space weather. We're going to see some breeziness at times, but overall, we're just going to have sunshine, low humidity, very little way in the chances of rain through the weekend. Temperatures will be above average. We're still looking at maybe a little bit of a cooling trend next week. That cold front on Monday, not looking as strong, but I think early next week, we'll have a couple of frontal systems that will mainly change temperature a bit. Still don't see that widespread hard freeze. There could be some pockets of frost. It's late September. That's the time of year that starts to happen, but a widespread cold still not foreseen, at least for another six or seven days. Look up. What do I mean by that? Well, we do have some things going on. While the atmosphere is not going to be doing much in this part of the world, we're going to have two things going on. First of all, for you Aurora watchers, we've had an uptick in Aurora activity here over the last couple of weeks, and there's going to be a, a low level geomagnetic storm possible as we get into the 25th. So sky watchers, you may wanna pay attention to the skies over the next 24 to 48 hours at night. We might have a little bit of a war activity. It's not a strong geomagnetic storm, but we could have one. So keep an eye. Also, we have a comet coming up. It's just now making the news. But there is the possibility of a naked eye comet, maybe, and certainly one that is going to be visible with telescopes and binoculars coming up. And uh, the days ahead, especially this weekend, could offer an opportunity. So for you photographers out there, there's a lot in the sky that you could take advantage of. The negative, you need to be up very, very early in the mornings or stay up late at night. But hey, it can be worth it sometimes to do that. Some beautiful sunrises and sunsets, some high clouds moving across the region yesterday, making for a really nice sundown in some areas. And that'll be about the most the atmosphere is going to provide us. Nice sunrises and sunsets. The high level clouds that came through yesterday moving on out, as you can see right here. High pressure from the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada, from the desert states all the way through the west. All of the action is going to be in the south central and southeastern United States with the tropical activity and that low pressure you see over the Midwest. High pressure by tomorrow will be right on top of the Rockies. So going to be warm. This is going to be a situation that needs to be watched with this tropical storm likely going to become a hurricane and merging with this low here. And that's going to make for some very wet weather in the south central and the southeast while the west we're going to be under that veil of high pressure. Now this is for Thursday. There's a little wave, little wave going across the U.S. Canadian border. This is going to maybe cause a slight fluctuation in temperature and it's going to make it, well, the wind will pick up a bit. Going to get a little on the windy side, nothing terrible, but we're really grasping at things to talk about. Here's the tropical activity headed towards the Florida Panhandle. And then as we get into Sunday, high pressure remains in place. That low stays there. The log jam we talked about yesterday continues. The main jet stream is well up north into Canada. So through the weekend, severe clear. Precipitation chances through Sunday look like this. So you can see all the wet here, but you can see all the dryness across the west. This is right here. This is maybe a few sprinkles, light afternoon showers that could develop over the higher terrain, but that's it. There's just really very little happening. Relative humidities are really, really low. There's no connection anymore to the subtropics. So this time of year, it's less about this and it's more about what goes on up here. But we're cut off from what's happening up there. This is done for the season. So we have this weather, very warm. Temperatures will be well above average over the next seven days across most of the US and most of Canada. This is by next Tuesday. Now we start to see the high pressure retrograding a little bit more off the west coast. So this will get us more into a northwest flow. This is why we may start to see some cooling trends next week. Again, this is not the Arctic opening up. This is just the air masses in northwest Canada, which are cooler, 
sending some cooler air into the north central United States. But that probably will not be associated with any significant precipitation chances, at least through Monday, probably Tuesday. Now, we do see the solar activity still very active. So we have a G1 geomagnetic storm. It's a minor geomagnetic storm predicted for the 25th. So it's not off the charts, but as you know, these auroras are fickle. Sometimes they show up when you don't expect it. Sometimes when you expect them, they don't show up at all. But if you uh, want to chase the aurora the next couple of nights, especially the night of the 25th, keep an eye on things. Then we've got this comet. Now that's a mouthful to talk about. Let's just call it C2023A3. <laughs> I'm not going to try to pronounce that for you, but it's now beginning to show up. Now, this is a comet uh, that has a lot of potential, but comets are like auroras. Sometimes they really disappoint. Sometimes they can put on quite a show. But this is a comet that is going to make a very close approach to Earth. As we see right here, this is the path of the comet here between now and into early October. And you can see the path. It's very close to the sun. Now, this is part of the problem and one reason why you haven't heard much about it, because it's in the glare of the sun. But in the coming days, especially by late this week and this weekend, very low on the east-southeast horizon around sunrise, it's going to climb high enough and get enough away from the sun glare that you might be able to see it in the northern hemisphere. And uh, it's going to reappear. It's going to get really close. It's going to go below the horizon, then come back up again into early October. But the weekend coming on up is going to offer a real good opportunity because if you look down here, these are the dates at the bottom. So here we are, the 24th and the 25th coming up. As you look, this graph is showing you the height uh, in degrees above the horizon. So what's going to happen as we get to the end of the week and the weekend it reaches its highest peak above the horizon, and then you can see it drops off sharply. So what'll happen is later this week and into the weekend, with the opportunity for clear skies in many areas, you might be able to see it. So I grabbed this from Live Science. This first website up here, the Sky Live, is a really good way for you to try to know where in the sky exactly to look. There's gonna be a lot of resources online you can use. I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly where to look. Use your online resources, especially if you want to be a photographer and get a shot of this. So this statement right here from Live Science, I think, sums it up very well. Between Friday the 27th and Wednesday, October 2nd, probably the best opportunity, but you may want to go out and peek to the east, southeast the next few mornings. If you're up early, get those binoculars out. If you got a telescope, get them ready. So uh, we also have a waning crescent moon where it could be around later this weekend and into early next week. So the weather is not going to produce much, but the sun and a comet may offer some opportunities to have a little bit going on. Have yourself a good Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.